time heals no wounds. Written and narrated by Butterfly Coffee and produced for audio by Mr. Judge. this to happen. The hot axle boxes and worn coupling rods were persistent issues and the change from left to right hand drive meant adjustment was a nuisance, but this? Never so soon in the manager's life. A crowd of men scrambled to the bomb shelter, only to pass the ruined S-160 on the way. Its boiler had exploded and it stood at an angle derailed and sagging. Pieces of the engine had flown everywhere, smashing into things standing up to 50 feet away. There was no hope for its crew. When senior management arrived at the scene, they all had a lot to say. Up to the job, did you say? That's one now gone for good. We can't manage with what we have now and one decides to just blow up on us. Caitlin then rounded the corner, looking rather shaken. She had a nasty headache, and her face had been peppered with shrapnel. Both her cab windows were smashed, and when she stopped, her driver took the fireman, who was holding his head and howling in pain, across the line to the station building. He would have to go to hospital. What happened? The dinty stuttered. That Yankee engine was moving off with some box vans and the bloody thing just blew up, said Ashanta. The crew's already off to them pearly gates. Caitlin didn't know what that meant, but knew by now it wasn't good. As she was moved off, two men began walking back to the station. You were saying your own engines were built for the job of helping us out of this fight, were you, Sergeant? I wouldn't call that! Bloody helping us out of the fight. I dare say that's helping our bloody enemy than helping us. My engines are liability ain't nothing in question, Turner. It's your pretty boy drivers that can't tell a throttle from a reverser that made him go AWOL. Oh, Sergeant, I would beg to differ. This is not the first time one of your engines has leveled a Martian yard with one of their boilers. No, in fact, I would dare say this is the third and counting. And it proves your posh drivers can't handle anything outside of their own pretty little copper pot locomotives. And you better watch your tongue, Turner, or I'll have you transfer to the reserves faster than you can say railroad crossing. Defect the blame all you wish, Sergeant. In the meantime, your best tend to your men. This afternoon has just become all the more chaotic. Nobody even noticed an engine standing in the platform, still as a statue, and desperately panicking. That night, Caitlin had terrible dreams about the wrecked S-160. Did he blow up instantly? Did he know something was wrong, or did he never suspect a thing? Did the crew read the signs in time? She could only imagine him trying to put on some sort of front like that horrible sergeant to convince his drivers he was okay, when all of a sudden he just... The 
the little Jinty was shocked awake, eyes wide and panting hard. Someone yelped beside her, and that only startled her even more. Caitlin began panicking, looking around for the source of the noise. But instead, she found Lizzie gawking at her. Caitlin stared up in fear. She hadn't meant to wake the 4300. Sorry, Lizzie, she trembled. Lizzie didn't immediately reply, but when she did, I saw him. Huh? I saw the bugger blow up. Caitlin was horrified, but she didn't get to reply as Lizzie began speaking. I was coming down with a supplies train. As I approached the platform, I saw him. I locked eyes with the beggar and then... Gone. She huffed like she was struggling to breathe. Then I, I stopped seeing the station and saw France. He was back in France. The mogul began trembling. Her frames and rods rattled. All I could see was mud and rails and the wounded. All I could hear were guns, planes, tanks. Her scarred cheek began twitching and wincing. All I could... Caitlin listened in horror, alarm spiking through her as Lizzie suddenly stopped speaking, staring off into space with wild, frightened eyes and heaving harsh, ragged breaths. Her trembling got worse. Something would have to come off soon. Steam began wisping from every joint she could see. The tank engine instinctively called out. Lizzie? Lizzie? L Lizzie, answer me! Caitlin met Lizzie's petrified stare again and almost looked away. It was unflinching. P Please, calm down. It's okay. Nothing's here. Nothing but us. The ragged breathing slowly got smoother, and the shaking soon stopped. But Lizzie didn't once look away, or even blink. Caitlin gulped. Oh, please. You're scaring me. With a last hard stare, the 4300 finally looked away. Caitlin heaved a sigh of relief. What on earth happened? Why had Lizzie suddenly started shaking and breathing funny? Why did she not once look away from the Jinty, instead holding her with that piercing stare? She looked... unnatural. Scared, even? Lizzie's behaviour was very different for the next week or so. Her gruff demeanour was gone, and she held a more nervous look instead of her usual fed-up frown. She skittered about from place to place like she was afraid to be seen, and barely responded to anyone with any form of coherency. Caitlin was very concerned for the mogul and asked Duchess what was going on. Duchess grew silent. Do you remember when I told you there had been a previous war? When those who returned said it was awful, it truly was. They had been put under so much pressure that their nerves had either snapped or were about to snap. These poor men were tired and frightened and under a great deal of tension. Battle fatigue was common in Great War veterans. I never thought it could happen to an engine. Poor Lizzie. Will she be all right? With all intents and purposes, yes. I suppose so. Remember this, Caitlin. Every man and engine is marked by an experience. Some of which are good, others are bad. 
I believe Lizzie was unfortunate enough to experience the worst of the Great War at a young age, and as such, has not properly allowed herself to come to terms with whatever may have happened to her. It is a dreadful shame. Caitlin later found Lizzie at the colding stage, and whistled to her. She felt bad for making the mogul jump, but put on a smile and said, You're okay. You're going to be fine. You might not feel like it now, but you will be, okay? The Jinty wasn't sure, but she thought she saw a ghost of a smile. Thanks. I needed that.